We at Heritage Church International would like to personally thank you for your support of this dynamic, prophetic, and teaching ministry. Visit us online at theprofitcenter.com for ministry resources, live streaming, and additional information about this powerful ministry. Now prepare yourself to receive a dynamic word by Bishop R. S. Walker. Uh, we are going to, we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to be talking about relationship. And you know what, um, as I was, um, as I was preparing, as we were preparing, um, as we were preparing, I think that, you know, it, uh, one of the things that uh, the Lord really impressed upon me was, um, what we should actually, uh, what we should actually talk about, uh, what we should actually talk about uh, today, protect, uh, really, and it's probably uh, going to be, is going to last all month. Um, you know, there are specific principles. There are specific principles that I think is uh, important for us to make sure that we're that we're operating, you know, I know a lot of times when, when we talk about relationship, I think people, um, and we probably actually do it, uh, talk about things like, uh, things like marriage or uh, we talk about marriage or we talk about uh, uh, things relative to um, intimate relationships. But I think that one of the things that we really need to uh, engage in is first of all, is first of all relationship. Period. You know, not just uh, not. I mean, some of you may not even be uh, interested in, um, you know, a romantic kind of a relationship, and you know, and that's perfectly and that's perfectly fine. You know, that's perfectly fine. But I think that one of the things that we really should, uh, we really should consider is, are we in a position, have we actually developed particular principles within ourselves that would even, that would even make us relational? If I could say it that way, and you know, and I think that's uh, I think that's a real uh, I think that's a real challenge. You know, I remember um, a man of God used to be on uh, used to be on television. I remember him saying this. Uh, I remember him saying this, and and you know, I had to really give that some thought. He he said this. He said he said you know a lot of people a lot of people that. Um, that may desire to be married are not marryable. And I thought, man, I thought, you know, I had never ever considered, uh, even considered that, that some people are not marryable. And, <laughs> and so when you think about, when you think about that, how many of you have ever really thought about that? Let me, let me just put that question out there. How many of you have ever really thought about um, how many of you ever really thought about that? Whether or not uh, people are marryable. You know, when he said that, when he said that, that uh, this was a lot of years ago. He, I think he's, I think he's gone on home to be with the Lord now. I think um, it was Pastor Cherry. Carla, Pastor Cherry's gone home now, right? Yeah. Okay. So he's gone home. So. You know, but when he said that many years ago, I never really even thought, never really even thought about the subject, probably had never even heard that, heard that word mentioned that way, not even marriable. And so that's not what we're talking about on tonight. We're not even, we, we don't want to, uh, that's not what we want to engage in on tonight. But I'll tell you what we do want to talk about. We want to talk about uh, given principles of uh, given principles of 
Um, personal principles, I think that's the best way to put it, personal principles that makes us, uh, that positions us, um, that positions us for relationship. You know, and when we, when we say relationship, you know, not necessarily the boyfriend, girlfriend thing, not necessarily uh, marriage, um, but, you know, I mean, just with people, all of us have some kind of a relationship going on, whether it's a relationship with a coworker, uh, whether it's a coworker relationship, whether it's a, 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 a spiritual relationship, whether it's uh, uh, no matter what kind of relationship it is, you know, uh, I think it's I think it must be clear that there are given principles, and God, it really God just kind of highlighted these things for me. Um, there are given principles that you and I have to make sure that we're operating in. Um, and these things actually have to be developed. You don't wake up one morning and wham, they're, they just are there. And so I want to give, so I want to give you some of these, uh, some of these principles. And before we get into this, let's just, let's just give uh, the first principle. Let's just talk about the first principle. What's, what's the first? Uh, integrity. Okay, so the first principle is integrity. Here's the question I want to, I want to ask you. Do you, would you say that, would you say, how many of you would say that you have integrity? And you guys know Bishop's term for integrity. He's always used it. And I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> um, it's doing the right thing when no one's looking. Is that what? Yeah. So pretty much cut and dry. It's doing the right thing when no one is looking. And when you think about, when you think about that, when you think about that being the um, when you think about that as, um, uh, when you think about that as the, as, let's just say a basic definition of integrity, doing the right thing when nobody, when no one's looking, that means that, that means that you, you, you that means you don't cheat on your taxes. That means you um that means if someone dropped something on the ground and you didn't and you actually saw them but they didn't know they dropped it that means that even if it was a wad of money you wouldn't keep it because you have integrity oh, you I do see. the right thing you don't eat the grapes in the grocery store <laughs> <laughs> you say you don't eat the grapes in the grocery store yeah i mean my grandmother she used to do it my mother did it they would always test the grapes before they bought them so yeah. That's allowed, right? <laughs> <laughs> I eat the grapes. <laughs> well, you try one or two, but yeah, you know yeah, when you, what two. it all boils down to. Yeah, I mean, you don't eat the whole bag on your way to the, you know. I mean, like one of the things I may do is in the grocery store. Uh, depends on, you know, if I go to the grocery store and I'm and I'm hungry, I will get a bag of chips. I will get a bag of chips and I eat while I'm shopping. But I do scan the bag, you know, no matter how many are still in the bag, I do scan the bag because if I don't, that means that means we just stole something. Well, I just stole something. And so, okay, so let's let's get into what this actually looks like. Let's get into um let's get into the first principle. Yeah, the first principle, readiness. integrity uh from a biblical perspective. And, and remember, all of these things that we're going to cover, uh, everything that we cover, we want it to be from a biblical perspective. Because now remember, one of the things that you and I have to understand, and that is that you are, uh, is that you and I were created in the image of God and after the likeness of God. And so a lot of times what we try to do is we try to function, even in Relationship. Relationship was ordained of God. And we're going to, at, at some point, we're going to get into the first relationship. 
uh, that existed. Um, and so relationship uh, is, is, an, uh, is an organism that was created by God. And so a lot of times what we try to do is we try to work these relationships apart from God. And we're trying to figure out why is this thing not working? Because now with everything that, uh, with everything that, um, that exists, there are particular rules that, uh, that comes along with that particular thing that, that exists. And so if rules come with that, you know, if you buy a toaster, rules come with the toaster. If you buy a light, rules come with the light. If you buy a car, rules come with the car. Most of the time we don't read all of the rules that apply to the car and we end up done with the car before we ever realized all that it would do because we didn't actually sit down and read that thick manual, which are the rules for it. Same thing for us. You know, we're trying to get relationship to work and we just simply, we just simply haven't read the rule book. You know, the 66, 66 books, 66 books of um, how relationship works. And so let's get into that. And the very first thing that we need to identify is whether or not we have integrity. You want to start off? You want me to start? Reading um, Genesis? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and read. Uh, it's only a few verses. Okay. Man, this is so powerful, though. I, man, I, I, this is so powerful. All right. So I'm reading in the Amplified. Uh, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. And Potiphar, did you did you tell them where you were reading? Oh, I'm sorry, Genesis 39, starting at verse one. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh, the mm -hmm. captain of the royal guard, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he, even though a slave, became a successful and prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper, succeed in his hands. Mm -hmm. So Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favor in his sight and he served him as his personal servant. He made Joseph here over his house and he put all that he owned in Joseph's charge. It happened that from the, from the time that he made Joseph overseer in his house and put him in charge over all that he owned, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. So the Lord's blessing was on everything that Potiphar owned in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left all that he owned in Joseph's charge. And with Joseph there, he did not need to pay attention to anything except the food he ate. Now, Joseph was handsome and attractive in form and appearance. Then after a time, his master's wife looked at Joseph with desire and she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, with me in the house, my master does not concern himself with anything. He has put everything that he owns in my charge. He is, he is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God and your husband? Okay, so now let's, let's look at this woman. Let, let me, let's bring you up to speed, first of all. When we're looking at this, I think it's um, I think it's important for us to identify where uh, where he was at this particular time. So let's look at the things that uh, okay. So let's look at the things that uh, where Joseph actually was at this time. So by this time in jo in Joseph's life, he he had already experienced. He had already experienced being criticized uh, by his brothers as a dreamer. You, how many of you remember that? He was criticized. Um, now, now remember, all of these things that I'm getting ready to name, he already had these experiences. And so he, he, was, he was criticized by his brothers for being a dreamer. He was thrown into, he was thrown into a ditch. He was yelled at by his father, for being a dreamer, or for his dream, I should say. He was sold into slavery. Um, and so he, so he had to have been feeling some level of rejection. Abandoned. Come on, come on, let, let, yeah, and abandon. And, and I mean, let's, let's, bring this, let's bring this text to life. Mm -hmm. 
This is where Joseph was. This is where Joseph was. Now understand this, no matter what you go through, you can always, you can always reflect back on your training. Mm -hmm. we'll always work together. I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna try that one more time. You can always reflect right back to your training. And so now think about this now, think about this. And so Joseph went through all of those things, but yet his integrity stayed intact. How many of you can really see that? He never lost his integrity. And so, and you know, and I, I thought about, I thought about, and we won't go there right now, but I, I, I thought also about Job, that his integrity stayed in, intact no matter what he went through. Now, I wonder, I wonder how, how would we be doing with that? I wonder how would we be doing with that? How are we doing? I mean, how are we doing so far? <laughs> I mean, because mm -hmm. Joseph, if anything, he was per se justified. Yeah. You know, he had been, you know, rightfully wrong, mm -hmm. abandoned, left, and sold into a foreign country. And I mean, he, he was justified. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, if we can, if we can even say that, you know, I'm justified in a way, I mean, the way, <laughs> if we can even say that, you know, and, and really think about that. Really think about that, though. He would feel some kind of some kind of a level of justification. I think I think we have to say that. But now think about this, and I want you to really get this. Um, so here he is, and he comes into. Now, I don't know a lot of people that are sold into that would be sold into slavery after having gone through all of that that wouldn't that wouldn't be sold with an, with an attitude. I'm gonna try it one more time. They would be, they would probably be sold with an attitude. So now I want you to get this because then remember these are things that we should have working in our lives in order to come to this point in our existence, whether it's a, whether it's a relationship uh, that you're having uh, at work, you know, not a romantic relationship, just a relationship, you know, um, whether it's uh, you know a uh, spiritual relationship you have, brother sister brother sister in Christ, a uh, 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 biological brother sister relationship, uh, um, husband and wife, whatever the case may be, here's the number one question: Have you been operating from the per, uh, from the perspective of integrity? Now, here's something else I want you to, I really want you to see in this. Um, when we looked in here. When we looked in here, I think another thing that um, that we saw, um, read verse number one again, watch this. And I want you guys to make sure you follow along in your Bible. Watch this. And I want, you, I, want to sh I want to show you, because remember, integrity is already intact. So I want you to actually see the result of integrity. Okay, go ahead, verse number one again. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the royal guard, mm -hmm. bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. Mm -hmm. The Lord was with Joseph, and, and he, even though a slave, became a successful and prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Okay, so now, now think about this. In verse number two, this is what I want you to get, that God was, or the Lord was with Joseph. Now, what was it? Now, what was it that enabled the Lord to be with Joseph? Remember what he said to Moses? Surely I will go with you. And so when, when, when Joseph gets to Egypt and he's sold into slavery, the Lord was with Joseph. Now, understand this. It's actually integrity. It's actually integrity that enables God to be with us, no matter what your relationship is. It, it, it's actually the, it's, it's that integrity piece. And, and I think that when we look at this, we can really see why, um, why it's so important for us to have this working in us, whether we're in a relationship or not. Does, does that make sense to you guys? Whether in a relationship or not, you know, you, if you had this working, you're more attractive. 
actually, that's that so funny that you said that because I had put that down, that Joseph's integrity, it attracted the type of relationship. It attracted uh, Potiphar and he saw something in him. And that was, it, you know, when you're walking in integrity, it will attract the types of relationships that you need in your life. Mm -hmm. So that's an important key. That's, that's, that's good. That's good. So, so integrity, it, it, it's a magnet. Mm -hmm. It's a magnet. How many of you can see that? And so now, now understand this, and nobody knows you. Um, if you're in a relationship, probably nobody knows you like that person that you're in a relationship with or your, or your husband or your wife or whatever the case may be. No, nobody knows you like that person. And so now understand this. If you don't have, if, if you don't have integrity, they, they are going to know it for sure. And, um, and I mean, you know, we really need to probably just kind of pull that apart. Um, and I know that we're talking about uh, integrity, just operating, just operating from the perspective of integrity, because if we don't operate in integrity, in integrity, well, here's one of the challenges that's going to come up. One of the challenges that's going to happen is that, uh, is that there's not going to be an attraction of favor. There's not going to be an attraction of favor. Whether you need favor from your boss, whether you need favor from your husband or your wife, whether you need favor from uh, whoever, you're, whoever you're with, whether you need favor from a sister or a brother, whatever kind of favor you need, it's not going to be there. Now, understand this. Well, you know, I mean, uh, we have actually said, you know, and I know, um, you know, for instance, jobs come up. Uh, jobs come up and uh, they come to, they, people come to us and say, hey, look, I'm looking, looking for someone uh, in uh, that, you know, that may need a job in this particular area or that area. And you know what? What do you think is the first thing that we think about? Somebody flip your mic on. What is the first thing you think we think about? Taking y'all a long time to get that, get that. Integrity, mic. Whether integrity. integrity. Say it again. Integrity. A person that has displayed, it's in, displayed integrity, whether we can trust them when we can't see them. Why? Because it's your hey, reputation on the line. You know, why? Your reputation is on the line. Absolutely. Because, because when, you, when you refer someone, you're referring them on the honor of your name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many of you understand that? You, you're, you're referring them on the honor of your name. And so if, so you started, you started going through the Rolodex of your mind <laughs> and you know, maybe Rolodex is a bad term because people don't know what a Rolodex is no more. Um, so you, you started going through that, you started going through that list in your mind and you, and you thinking, okay, well, do you think that this person will, will show up? Or do they, or do, or have they developed a habit of not even showing up, knowing that you just, uh, you just, you just put your name out there? Do you think this person will show up? Well, <laughs> maybe. Well, see, we don't want to go on a maybe because, uh, because you put your, you, you are putting your name on the line. And well, people came to you because they believe that you have integrity and they believe that you're going to refer someone With that, integrity. right, that also <laughs> has integrity, you know? Okay, but anyway, we, we, we need to move on. So integrity is a, is a huge piece. Integrity is a huge piece um, of relationship. And so let's go, let's go through a few more of these uh, uh, a few more of the things uh, uh, relative to Joseph. Okay. Okay. So, so remember, he he's 
He sold into slavery. Mm -hmm. Favor showed up. It was recognized. It was recognized on him. Go ahead. Okay. Um, picking back up at two, the Lord was with Joseph, and he, even though a slave, became a successful and prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all. Now stop. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a good point. The, uh, and, and his master saw, saw what? That the Lord was with him. Stop. What did that look like? <laughs> let, let, me, let me just kind of pull from, uh, let me pull from some of you guys. Some of you guys, what do you think this, this heathenistic uh, leader saw on Joseph. I mean, what do you think he saw outside of integrity? Now let's let's go into it. Outside of that, what do you think he actually saw? I mean, you know, and you can use your sanctified imagination. How he operated in excellence. Okay, how he operated in excellence. What else do you what else do you think he saw? I think he did not increase. Say it again. I think he saw that the way he manages his business caused him to have increase. He obviously wasn't getting all that he was getting before Joseph came, you know. And so when Joseph came, everything that um, he had increased. Okay, okay. And, um, and but now remember what was actually said. He he saw what what was said. I, I want it exactly the way it said here in the Amplified. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him. Okay, so now his master saw that the Lord was with him. Okay, okay, let, let's 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 go back to uh, let's go back to the text. Can we do that? Can we go back to the text? A heathenistic king. My God in heaven. A heathenistic king that don't even know God. Mm. Let me try that one more time. A heathenistic king. Uh, no, 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 not, not the heathenistic mm. king. Heathenistic leader, because he's not the king. Um, a heathenistic leader who don't even know God saw that the Lord was with Joseph. Okay, so now watch this now. And, and remember, we're still pointing to integrity. And so remember, I, I posed this question to you. How many of you have integrity? Because now remember, integrity, integrity is the, is the key to the lie that causes things to come. It's the key to the lie that unlocks everything. Favor comes. It's clear that the Lord is with you. Uh, and, and, and this is by, now remember, it's a heathenistic king. And so it's not like, it's not like he saw the Lord walking down beside Joseph. And, and so understand this. So it's not like that. He saw that the Lord was with Joseph. And so now understand this. And because he, because he saw that, it had to be something tangible. Yeah, that he saw because he didn't actually see the Lord. So it had to be something actually tangible that he saw a manifestation. Watch this. Because, and I need to point this out, because he had integrity. Now, because he had integrity, these these people wanted to be in relationship with Joseph. They wanted to pull Joseph up in so that Joseph's favor would be on what they're doing. Okay, so let's let's go just a bit further. We, we're gonna have to see if we can speed this up a little bit. Well, I have a question then. I mean, if the master saw that the Lord was with them, how many of us, how many people that we work around that are unbelievers, how many yes. see that the Lord is with us? I mean, and it does, the text doesn't say he was talking, he was preaching. It just says that he saw. He saw. So even in his work, mm -hmm. he was able to see the Lord with them. So how many of us in our work mm -hmm. that people can see that the Lord is with us based on how we work? 
Mm -hmm. us showing up on time to work, us mm -hmm. doing our work without grumbling and complaining, mm -hmm. us not trying to get off early, knowing we didn't finish our shift or have you. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, a, that's an excellent point. I mean, how many of you really understand that? It's connected. Yeah, with your integrity. Which, which, which actually, which actually now, and, and you guys may remember when we were talking about worship, that right there, how you carry yourself in, uh, in the workplace or how you carry yourself in the grocery store or how you carry yourself with your neighbors or how you carry yourself in all of these relationships, yeah. how you carry yourself in, uh, in your, your spousal relationship, husband to the wife, wife to the husband, how you carry your, your, yourself in the, uh, in the relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend thing, how you carry is, is either as an act of worship towards God or it's an act of idolatry uh, towards the enemy, and so you you have to you have to really under you have to really identify: Am I really am I really operating from a perspective of integrity in all of in all of my relationships, whatever that relationship is? Am I operating? I'll say that again: Am I operating from a perspective of integrity, where my relationship with God? can be seen in what I do and how I operate in ministry and how I operate on my job in in how I operate uh, with my husband or my wife in how I operate in whatever the relationship can will people know that God is in my life that's that's I'm telling you that is a huge question that's huge Okay, so we better run on. All right. Um, in verse 3, 39, 3. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and mm -hmm. that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper. Who so caused? The Lord. The Lord caused all he did to prosper. Mm -hmm. Understand this. It doesn't matter that you and I are going through a pandemic. It didn't, see, none of that matters. Understand this, you and I can experience the hand of God on our lives and what, in whatever it is that we're involved in. Yeah. We can see the hand of God in that. Understand this, but you and I, we have to be operating according to uh, integrity. I really hope that makes sense to you. Now, let me give you a definition, a Bible definition of integrity. Can you see this? Yes. Yeah, okay, so we, we will give you a Bible, a Bible, a biblical definition uh, for integrity. Okay, good. Go, um, I can't transfer that over there. I can actually because I have it here. That way, uh, let me see if I can grab this. You want me to read while you're doing it? Yeah, yeah, okay. thanks. All right. The most common translation of, is it Tome? Uh, tome. Tome, okay. The most common translation of Tome by the King James Version, integrity, is still one of the best ways to understand the noun. The most frequent used refers to a person's integrity, often as integrity of heart, meaning, sincerity, or perhaps moral and wise character. Uh, uh, Genesis 25, uh, 20, verse 5, uh, Psalms 26, 1, and Psalms 78, 72. It refers to innocence of willful wrongdoing and having a clear conscience in a relationship, 2 Samuel 15, 11. Okay, so let's talk about that a minute. Let's talk about what, uh, what the Bible actually says integrity is. Now, now here's one of the points that you, you want to remember. You want to make sure that you understand that it doesn't mean if you and I say we have integrity, it doesn't mean that we're going to be without mistakes. How many of you understand that? It doesn't mean that, that integrity does not safeguard you from making mistakes. Right. 
I, I really pray that you get that. Or even bad things happening to you. Right, or even bad things happening. Because I mean, we look at Joseph, I mean, you know, I don't call those good things. I don't call those good things. Now, if we read the end of the, if we read the end of the story, yes. you actually see that there were bad things that happened, but good came out of it. Because he was able to save his whole family yes. because he went through process. Now understand this, what do you think would have happened if he would have complained? Mm. If he would have complained, mm -hmm. how do you think that that would, which, which would have been outside of integrity, by the way, complaining is not inside of integrity. <laughs> okay, I just, I just thought I would drop that in. Um, can't do a little murmur. No, you can't even do a little murmur because it's out, party. it's outside of integrity. Just a pity party, about not a pity party. It's outside of integrity. Okay, because no, no, no. Uh, so now look at this. It says that. Um, let's see, where is it? It says it refers to innocence of willful wrongdoing and having a clear conscience in a relationship. That's good. So, so here's the question. In your relationship, whether it's a, whether it's a husband, husband to wife, wife to husband, girlfriend, brother, girlfriend. sister, boyfriend, girlfriend thing, then do you have a clear conscience in that relationship? Okay, because now, now remember, and I think this is something that is uh, something that is important for us to uh, for us to really think about. Let me see. Okay, just a couple of questions. Here's one of the questions I want to I want to uh, I want to ask. One of the questions that I want to ask is, do you harbor things in your heart? because people have wronged you uh, purposefully or not. Maybe they didn't even know um, that they wronged you, but nevertheless, they wronged you. And I think this is really good with the woman on woman dynamic because sometimes a lot of women, they don't have friends. Okay. Because there was maybe a bad relationship at some point mm -hmm. with a woman and they wrote all women off. Like, okay. I just, I'm not having any more female friends they're all vindictive or whatever have you because of maybe whatever happened to that, that isolated episode. Mm -hmm. Which means that, that that way of functioning stands on the outside of integrity, mm -hmm. which means that now you're blocking God from favoring you, mm -hmm. blocking God from favoring your business, blocking God from favoring your ministry, blocking God from favoring, uh, from favoring your relationship blocking God from favoring the kind of things that he would want to draw. Because now remember, we've already said that favor, watch this now. We've already said that, um, that integrity is a magnet. Yes. My God, I pray that you get that. Mm -hmm. Integrity is a magnet. Okay, so now watch this now. So, um, so, so, I mean, do you harbor something in your heart? Understand this. Now, if you if you do, if you do harbor something uh, in your heart, that's called that's called being unforgiving, which is on the outside of integrity. Let me let me ask you another one. Um, do you mistreat people? Do you mistreat people because you've been mistreated? That's called being vengeful. That's on the outside of integrity. How many of you are really getting that? I just put together just a couple of questions. <laughs> I mean, there, and, and I'm sure that you, you guys can think of a thousand other uh, examples that, uh, because you know what integrity is, you guys can think of a thousand other things that, that would represent what we look like on the outside of integrity. The point is this. You're looking to be, you're looking to walk in God's favor. Understand this. God can change a business. God can change a ministry. God can change a person's life. 
God can change a, a marriage. He can change a relationship. He can change any of those things. But now understand this, but get, come on, give him something to work with. I'm gonna try that one more time. You have to give him something to work with. Now, I mean, I mean, I know that he can, he can, he can take, he can create something from nothing. Mm -hmm. He can do that. But when, as it now, well, let me let me just say it this way: He can create something, and I want you to hear this closely. He can create something from nothing that would be a miracle, mm -hmm. or he can take what you give him, and he can and he can. Uh, he can cause that to explode into a miraculous encounter. That's not a miracle. That means that you, in seed form, gave him something to work with. I didn't say in money. I say in seed form. So, so your action is giving God something to work with. In Joseph's case, he gave him integrity. What did God give him? God gave him favor on everybody that looked at him. Okay. How many how many of you understand that? Turned it into favor. He gave him integrity. Joseph gave God integrity and an, an integrity, a lifestyle of integrity. God gives him back. God gives him back favor with everybody that he ran into. How many of you, how many of you got that? I think this is something that we really have to understand that God is a God of principle. He's a God of principles. That's why, that's why he says, uh, that's why he said in, in his word, keep my laws and keep my statutes. A law is nothing but a principle. And so God set in motion particular laws that will govern particular things so that so that we might have something that we can give back to him that will bring favor in our lives or in anything that our hands touch. In this case, uh, if we look at really Joseph and we put it in uh, in proper context, we're going to see that what Joseph is favoring on behalf of on behalf of the Egyptians is business. So I didn't come up with that. That's something that, that's uh, in the text here. How many of you understand that? Uh, I didn't come up with uh, that this is relationship because when you look at what he had with, um, with Potiphar, that was a relationship. It was a working relationship, but nevertheless, it was a relationship. And then God blessed that relationship. And so then he, and I'm gonna I'm fast forward, so then he in, he end up going into uh, getting kicked into the prison. Oh, old girl lied on him. Yeah, she lied <laughs> from a lie. He ends up in the he ends up in the prison. But it just positioned him. It positioned him. I mean, it was a win win on every hand. I mean, it didn't feel like it. No, it never does <laughs> when you're going through those things. But the Lord was with him. And I think the question is, could what you're going through right now be a divine setup? Mm -hmm. But you're being distracted by it. Mm -hmm. You're being distracted by it and getting off guard, not staying focused. Because if you look at Joseph, everything is just like, you can't even imagine how this could even work out possibly but he kept the right attitude. He kept his integrity and, and he just kept getting elevated, even though <laughs> there were highs and lows, mm -hmm. there were highs and lows. Okay. And, and I think that's, I think that's a good point. He, he, you know, he, uh, if we look at the text and, and I want you guys to help us out uh, as we study this together. Um, so he kept the right attitude. Yeah. So attitude uh, attitude was, oh man, we need to get to that. Attitude was part of his integrity. Mm -hmm. You can't have a bad attitude and say, I'm walking in integrity. Integrity doesn't have an attitude. Ooh. 
Yeah, you know, I'm just waiting on, just give me one, one amen. That's all I want. I'm here. Just amen. one amen. I'm here. We got your amen. <laughs> amen, Bishop. <laughs> amen. I'm telling you, understand this. There is no way in the world that I can share a word with you and it doesn't hit back at us. Because this right here is for all of us. You know, I'm, you know, you may be getting, you may be getting a uh, word here, but understand this, man, this thing is hitting back at us <laughs> because understand this, we must be, uh, we must be partakers first of this before, you know, before we pass it on to anybody. Mm -hmm. And so understand this. And so these are things that, uh, these are things that, that I, I certainly had to learn. Because now understand this, understand this. Some, you know, people used to say, and I used to hear this message just preached all the time. You know, you need integrity, you need integrity. Some of the biggest churches and, and uh, some of the most powerful churches or what we would call powerful anyway, um, um, used, to, used to just scream this from the pulpit. You need integrity, get integrity, get integrity. But you know, you know the one thing they never said? How to do it. They never said how. If you're going to tell me to get integrity, if you're going to scream that at me from the pulpit, at least tell me how to get it. At least say, here's, here's how you get it. Okay, so now watch this. We, we, need to, we need to move on. We need to move on. Okay, so I was going to, I was going to show something else down here because this, this is, man, this is so rich. Uh, and we really need to, uh, we really need to get into this, man. Um, here's something. So, to, here, it up here, I think we That's did. We did. We cover that already. We didn't. Yeah, we did. We did. Is that? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I highlighted. I highlighted some of these, and that, that's a good. That's a good point. We need to uh, just kind of draw out of the. Um, just kind of draw out of the of the definition, uh, the biblical definition for integrity. Let's kind of pull some things out of here, um, because there's some things that uh, that the Lord uh, that the Lord had revealed in His Word, because the Word is inspired of God, um, relative to integrity, and and let, let's just grab these words. It's right there. Uh, it's right there in the definition we posted as well. Um, sincerity. It, it's it's a characteristic of integrity. Moral and wise character, moral and wise character. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a facet of integrity. Innocence of willful, of, uh, innocence of willful do, uh, wrongdoing. Um, next, having a clear conscience in a relationship. Now, now let's let's talk about that just a minute. Having a clear conscience in a relationship. I want to ask you, I want to ask you a question. Are you quick to say, I'm sorry? Wow. See, see, people of integrity, quick to say I'm sorry. You know, I mean, once you once you identify what you have done wrong, you know, I mean, it's not about proving, it's not about trying to prove your innocence. Jesus was accused of a lot of things that he didn't try to, uh, he didn't try to prove that he was innocent. You know, but think about this, and this is something that I want you to, I want you to really, I want you to really answer for yourself. You don't owe me an answer on this. You don't owe Pastor Betty an answer on this. This is not about this is not about us pointing a finger at you, you pointing your finger at anybody else. It's about everybody judge themselves. And so, so the the, the first thing that you know, I'll, I just want to I just want to ask you this question, just to put it on the table: Are you quick to say, "I'm sorry"? Are you are you quick to apologize? Okay, so so it you know, and understand this. And let me let me point back at let me point back at me. There was a time that um, you know, big preacher, uh, really, um, I felt he did me wrong. 
I felt he I, I felt he really did me wrong, he and his wife. If I called their name, you would know it, so I won't call it. Um, and I will never forget, God, God spoke to me and God said, God said to me, I want you to go. I want you to, I want you to call their office. I want you to uh, establish a meeting with them. And I want you to go there and apologize to them because of what you've harbored in your heart against them. What, what was God doing? What was he doing? Anybody know? Come on, we're talking about me now. We're not talking about you. He was building integrity in you. He was building integrity in me. Understand this. They had no clue that I had something in my heart against, against them. As a matter of fact, can I take this to the next step and say that uh, and say that to some measure, I didn't realize that I still had that in my heart. And so I'm asking God, God, show me me. And that was one of the things he showed me. And, and here's the question, because it blocked me from integrity. Yeah. I cannot tell you the, the amounts of things that unfolded when I was willing, watch this, when I was willing to get up off of my pride because the fact that you harbor that in your heart says that you are living in pride. The fact that you won't say you're sorry mm. is, is the fact that you are living in pride. Anybody that does that, I'm not talking, I'm not pointing to you, I'm let, I'm gonna let you point to you. Um, but now understand this, if you harbor something in your heart, you're, you're living in pride, not in integrity. And so, so he had me to go to them and I had to go to them and I had to apologize. I had to apologize and, and you know what? Without, without any expectation of them saying, you know what? I never knew that you felt that way, I'm sorry. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's a good thing that I didn't go there for that because I didn't get that. God sent me there to apologize to them. As a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, after I after I had apologized, and they and they understood what the challenge was, you know, I can remember, I can remember um, the uh, the male pastor. He said, he said, well, I wasn't your man of God. It wasn't my responsibility. I said, but you preach love. You preach the love of Christ. You, pre you preach the love of Christ. I expected you to hold up to what you were preaching. And, and, and he, I'm, I'm your man of God. I, it wasn't my responsibility. And, and you know what? What was that? Somebody tell me what that was. Oh, now, now not on his part. Why did, why did that come at me? Once I once I uh, went there to apologize, I'm not talking about his deal. Anybody? It was, a, it was a test to see if he was going to remain in integrity. It was a test. Because now understand this: once I apologized, I obeyed God. But then you have to have another opportunity <laughs> because you failed the first one. You had to have another opportunity. So and so I just didn't know that that opportunity, I knew that I was going to have another opportunity. I just didn't know it was going to show up the second that I apologized. Wow. I didn't know it was going to show up that quick. And so now understand this. And so I couldn't go out of there offended. Wow. I had to, I, I had to, you know, I had to just accept that. That was, that was, you know, that was what he said. That, that's how he felt. I, that he, that he wasn't my man of God, so he didn't feel any obligation um, um, to be Christ-like towards me. Are you getting this? And so now understand this. Here's my point. If, if we are functioning in a way towards, towards anybody, towards anybody, saved or unsaved, it means that we're not walking in integrity. And it means that it means that we're blocking God from favoring us in ways that he really wants to favor us. All because 
We want to hold on to the pride because it just feels good to still be mad at you. It feels good to just, just feel, just still hold that thing in my heart against against you because it just, it just, it just feels right. I feel justified. Understand this. <laughs> Understand this. When Jesus did what he did, he took all my justification away. No matter, no matter the fact that he rolled his head around on his neck and said, I wasn't your man of God. Understand this. When Jesus did what he did, he snatched my ability or my, my ability to hold that as justification. So, so I'm no long, I was no longer justified. He, look, what Jesus did, he did for you just like he did for the next person. And so, and so you don't have, you don't have any justification to be mad at anybody. And also I want to add, when we, mm -hmm. when we go to apologize, don't have any expectation because you went, mm -hmm. I don't know that you had any expectations. I know that probably no. came for a loop that he did that. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes we go apologize and think that it may be reciprocated. Sometimes you may not even get the apology back, but that's okay because you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you. Right. So don't, don't always necessarily going when you know that there is the alt there, or maybe you did something or they did something. When you go to apologize, don't have the expectation because just keep in mind, this is for you because when you have an expectation and they don't give you back what you thought mm -hmm. that you should have gotten, it's going to set you up for disappointment and even a further offense. A further offense, absolutely. Disappointment, another offense, which then will set you back. <laughs> it is a, it's a setback. It'll set you back. Absolutely, it is. It is a. It is a setback. Glory to God. I wish some of them cameras was on so I could see some faces. Glory to God. But understand this. Understand this. It's a setback. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And and understand this. It is a setback and the devil is in charge. Yep. I'm going to try that one more time. It's a setback and the devil is in charge if you fall into that. And so, you know, so you don't go there, you know, you don't go there to try to get, try to get an apology. I didn't go there for that. I went there because I was guilty. You say, well, what about him? Well, that's not my business. He, he's God's servant. How many of you understand that? You, you guys really understand that? Are you really getting that? It, that? it belongs to God. And so now watch this now. And so, so here's the, you say, okay, well, well, then what do I do with that? Because, you know, that, that thing is in my heart. So what do I do with that? I turn them over to God. Because they're not my, he's not my servant. He's God's servant. And what's the process to turn people over to God? <laughs> okay, then I'm glad you asked that. That is a that is a huge question. The process, I'm telling you, <laughs> glory to God. The the number one process, the turning them over to God, is to carry them in your hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I forgive them, and now I release them to you in Jesus' name. And if how many you, times do you do it? Say it again. How many times do you do it? I'm glad you said that again because I'm just going to tell you. If you need to do that every oh, single God. day yeah. until you experience on the inside of you that when you look at them, there's no more resentment. That when you hear their voice, there's no more resentment. Understand this. If you, if you don't do that, you walk, I'm telling you that you could literally walk around for years and you can still, and you still hold that same thing in there. You know why? Because the devil has his grip on that, making sure that you are always remembering that and you never get free. Ask me, I know I've been there. Thank you for sharing that because too many times, just like you said with integrity, that people will always say have integrity, have integrity, but they didn't tell you how. The mm -hmm. same thing is true for how to release people, you know, to Jesus, specifically people that are leaders in an ecumenical setting or a church setting. It's like, okay, this person did something and I'm 
I'm I'm harboring this resentment. That's a real emotion. It is. I mean, there are things that people do all the time and they may not have meant any harm or maybe they did, who knows? But teaching people how to release a person who is, um, who is saved is super important. So I'm so glad that you mentioned that and gave everyone the process and telling people the truth. Look, yeah. sometimes we take more than one time to do it. <laughs> yeah, You're not the only what, witness to that. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, what did Jesus say though? 70 times seven. And remember you said this, um, and I think you said it across the pulpit before that, to pray for them mm -hmm. like you will pray that, for yeah. yourself because it's, it's hard to not or stay mad or not forgive someone that you're praying for on a daily basis mm -hmm. yep and that's and that's number and that's the second thing uh we'll add to that i mean because yeah. if 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 you don't if, if if you don't really pray for them you, you know how difficult it is to pray for somebody that 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 really hurts you really bad yes sir i do i've been i'm telling you i've been there there are stories that there are stories that um, that hurt me so deeply that I don't even talk about. I don't even talk about. But now understand this: if I talked about it today, and some of those things I did talk about, and the reason that you don't know that it had gripped me the way it did was because. When I talked about it, I was so free. Understand this. But I can remember times that I, I talked about those things and, and that thing, you know, I couldn't I couldn't talk about those things without without crying. Understand this. And so so it's it's real. And so, but now when you pray for people that have wronged you, let me tell you something. It is awfully difficult to keep to keep harboring something in your heart against those people that you on purpose for real pray for. So that's so that's a number, that's a number two that goes along with cupping your hands. Because when you cup your hands and you're and you're um as if they are right there in your hands, and understand this, and you're on purpose feeling everything yes. that they did to you. And so when you open your hands, that is that is symbolic of the release that you're giving, that you're giving to them, where you're no longer holding them by the throat, you're completely, totally releasing them. Now, the the, the other prayers that you pray, now you pray that one, like I said, as many times as you need to pray it, because you know, I can't tell you how long it's going to take for you to get through it. Right. I know how long it took me to get through it. But I can't say I, because you know you and I may be different. So you know, so it may have taken it may have taken me. Now it may have taken me a lot longer than it took you because in in comparison, our hurt was different. Um, but I had to do that multiple times for multiple for multiple people. But then, um, but then I, you know. That thing, sometimes it, it doesn't feel like it much. Pray for them. Pray for their well-being. Pray for their well-being. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's not a get them prayer. He, he's, he's saying, Father, forgive them. He's he, on purpose. God, forgive them. Um, just in case you think that, well, that was Jesus that did that. Well, Acts chapter 7. Stephen did it also. He was, You know he was a man. So he did it also. He, he prayed the same prayer. Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Mm -hmm. what, no, wait a minute. While they were stoning him, mm -hmm. my God, you think you could, you think you could pray and ask God to, um, you think you could pray and ask God to forgive somebody while, they, while they're throwing rocks at you? <laughs> I understand this, but we have to be free enough where we can do that. Now, walking in integrity, walking in integrity, now understand this, and I wanna, because I don't wanna make this far-fetched. Walking in integrity means that you're not going to 
harbor these things in your heart. You're determined not to. Why? Because you know that that is against the will and the purpose of God. Understand this. Walking in integrity is your deciding not to do it. It takes discipline to pray for them. Doesn't take integrity to pray for them. It takes discipline to pray for them. It takes the power of God's forgiveness to pray for them. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you how I, how I did that. Let me tell you how I did that. And here's the only way, because I was hurt so deeply, so deeply, the only way that I could do that is to think about how God forgave me. Because now understand this, and I want you to, I want you to get this down. I want you to get this down. We judge, we judge people because of their actions. Mm -hmm. We judge ourselves on the basis of our intentions. Do I need to say that again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we judge people based on the, the, their actions. We judge ourselves based on our intentions. I didn't mean to do it. And so you're light on you. But when it comes down to what they did, you point that finger at them, you did this, you did that. We don't ever consider people's intentions. I've learned to do that. That is not something that I, that I came out the womb door. Because I'm telling you, when I was in the world, I was, a, I was one of them get them persons. I promise you I'm going to get you before you get me. If I just get a whip, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. If if I just got a whiff and somebody getting ready to get me, I'm gonna get them first. I'm gonna get them first and I'm gonna run. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get them first, but I'm running. You, you, I'm gonna get you, but you ain't gonna get me. And that was just that was just my rule. That was that was the kind of person that I was. And so God changed my heart. My God, man, that does make me want to cry. God changed my heart so that, so, that, so that people can wrong me and I can forgive them on the spot. Folks, that's not something, that's not something that, you, that, that you just do just right out the gate. You have, that's learned. That's a learned principle. Practice on purpose. Right? Yeah, I like that. It's a practice on purpose. You, 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 you. On purpose, you practice that. So, Bishop, I, I, um, so the lesson I learned from that, because I'm going to be honest, I was queen grudge, holding grudges, angry and unforgiving. And what I guess opened my eyes were the last two people that I was angry at for what they did. I, I have learned that I have taken responsibility for my own actions and what I do wrong. And so I understand if I'm wrong, if you're angry, you have a right to be. So being that, you know, when something is done, like these things were done to me and I was upset about it, both of them, are they died. Um, one was a heart attack and one of them was really horrible, um, tragic, but it kind of, it opened my eyes to, um, and even with my sister, we scream and holler and I wouldn't talk to her for six months, no problem. Um, and a, a, a situation really what kind of was my aha moment was, you know, I, there was something I needed to travel um, for my stepfather's sake and a friend of mine, you know, got angry because we had plans and I said, no, I need to go take care of my, my, um, my dad in Rhode Island. And so, um, I cussed her out. I, I mean, everything in the book. And then when I finally got around to getting into the scripture, that scripture said to be at peace with all men, even if it's not your fault. And so that was what changed my mind about how I treat people and how I approach, um, you know, my, my anger and unforgiveness comes from just a lot of pain and, you know, just from being, uh, nice and trying to 
uh, be a loving, giving person and people screw you or take advantage of you. And so realizing that and waking up to all that, I started to see people for who they really are, started cutting people off and you know, just not in a good way and pushing people away that wanted to stay in my life that I knew, you know, I didn't even want there anymore. So it like literally in the past two years, <clears throat> that is what has changed me because now I feel like I feel afraid to be angry because I don't want these people to die and I'm holding a grudge. Um, so my and, attitude and, has and definitely really, really changed. Think about that. Really think about that. Because, you know, um, how would how would you guys feel if you had something in your heart against someone and they died and you never got the opportunity to make peace, which God commands? It, 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 see, it's not a matter if he's going to command you to make peace with them. He already told us in his word. If you have an art in your, in your heart against your brother, go to them, brother or sister, generic term, go to them, make peace with them. Because I, I'm gonna tell you now, there's nothing on this planet that's worth, uh, there's nothing on this planet that's worth breaking, uh, breaking, uh, our our relationship. There's nothing on this planet that's worth that. Nothing. God, he demands us to make peace. Let's flip it. What would happen if you had something in your heart against someone and you died? And you died. You are standing before the judgment seat of Christ. And he asked you to give an account. And he asked you, why did you not make it right with them? What's your, what's your, um, what's your defense against that? I can answer that for you. You don't have one. None of us do. You know why? You know why none of us have one? Because of what Jesus did. So we're holding to what Jesus did for us, but not for what Jesus did for them. Does that make sense? Bishop, um, also, um, you need to release people that already who done stuff to you 50 years ago, they did and they gone. Mm -hmm. you, so you release them the same way that you, the process you said, release them, even though they gone, like back in the slavery days with the blacks. Mm -hmm. A lot of blacks went through a lot of stuff during slavery time. Yep. And these people are gone, yep. but they, um, their reaction to different things nowadays stems from how they were treated with the uh, white man back in the slavery day. This is just an example. With mm -hmm. the white man back in the slavery day, and they are treating people because they were hurt. And right. that hurt is still there because they can't release it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just using slavery as an example, but it could be a father, a mother that treats you bad and you're hurting, and they gone, but you're still harboring those feelings and that's how you treat other people because of those feelings from hurt and pain so uh -huh. you do release them the same way but you yeah. just can't do it in person exactly and 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 see because you're still here mm -hmm. so you're still here so you need to you need to still go ahead and release that and so um you know even if they're even if they're already gone you, you, have to, you have to forgive them. You have to forgive them. Let that go because, you know, you're the one that's in bondage, not them. You know, some people that have, uh, some people that may have done you wrong, whether they knew they did you wrong or not. Um, some people that, that have done you wrong, 
man, they may have repented of that thing and they've gone on in the Lord, not gone home with the Lord. They've gone on in the Lord. They're moving and God's moving in their lives. And you still in that bondage. You know why? Because you have not forgiven them. And, and because you have not, whatever year that was, you still back there. Never got the, never moved forward. Never moved forward. So one of the things that I learned to do years ago, and that is forgive people quickly. Forgive people quickly. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what they did. It doesn't matter what they did. I remember a time, and Jesus, uh, uh, the Lord, really rebuked me on this one. Um, because I'm wondering, in my unforgiveness, well, what you going to do about him over there? God said something to me, and I didn't even know it was in Scripture. And later on, God showed it to me that it was in Scripture. He said, he said this, if I will that they remain until I show up. What is that to you? Oh man, that was such a strong rebuke. What is that to you? Well, I didn't know that Jesus said that to Peter, but you know, man, that, that, came, that came up, man, it was forceful. Understand this, what was he saying? Let me deal with that person. Let me deal with that person. Because as long as you're dealing with that, as long as you have them, as long as you're harboring that in your heart against them, I can't even get to it because you got it. Understand this. And so God wants us so that we're not held in a bondage. God wants us to forgive them and release them. Understand this. When we do that, we're then right back in this place of walking integrity out and the result of integrity is God favoring you on everything that you touch. Everything you touch, God will favor you. I'm telling you right now, everything you touch, God will favor you. Does that make sense to you? Wow, we got to get ready. We have to close this up. Um, Bishop? Yeah. Um, what scripture... Um... Where would we find that scripture? Uh, what, what scripture is that? What if I what, what if I will that they remain until I return? I think that is John. Help me out on this one, Carla. I think that is John twenty-one or twenty, somewhere up in there, Saint John. I want to say it's Saint John. I'm pretty sure it's Saint John, but twenty maybe. I think it's John 21, 22, one moment. Okay. Thank you for that, Gwen. That's a that's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked. Oops, wait a minute. That is correct. It's uh, 21, 22. 21, 22, awesome. Yeah. There was another scripture um, where someone had pointed out that Jesus basically had told one of the apostles in so many words to mind your business I know it's, I think it's an ax or one of them, but I thought it was funny because, you know, people would think God wouldn't say things like that, but yeah, we have to mind our own business sometimes. And I had to learn that too. Yeah. I don't, I don't recall that one. Um, yeah. I don't recall. I don't recall that one. Yeah. Uh, it was, he didn't say that in those words, but it was a scripture in where one of the apostles was asking about the other apostle, I don't know, it was Mark and John. Um, yeah, I think that was, I think that was, that's this. I don't think that was in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think that was in Acts. Yeah, but okay. that's basically what this means. And, and but he, but he closed that up by saying, um, follow me. You follow me. You don't follow other people. You don't follow other people. You follow me. And. Now understand this. So we don't worry about what, how the punishment that God wants to bring on them because 
us being concerned about the punishment that God's gonna bring on someone else is an indication that we're not walking in integrity. We're, we're concerned about how they are gonna get punished. In other words, we want, we're walking around with a Jonah heart. And God really wants to, God wants us to have a, uh, he wants us to be a lot softer than that. And don't, and don't, don't worry about how somebody's going to be punished, but he wants us to walk in his love. Oh, that makes sense to you. Um, let me give you this last thing, then I'm going, then we're going to have to, uh, we're gonna to have to wrap this up. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, that's, let me see if I can grab this so that you, you guys can have it. Uh, because I think this is, I think this is important uh, for us to really, uh, for us to really understand. Um, and this is a this is a quote from uh, this is a quote from Stephen Covey. Uh, he's probably one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite authors, one of my favorite non gospel authors. Oops. Okay, so now let's let's read let's read that. All right. So Stephen Covey says. A person with high character exhibits integrity, maturity, and an abundant mentality. Okay, now, and, and really think about that. So remember, integrity is, is linked to your character. Yes. It's linked to your character. Um, and and so, so he said regarding, regarding character, a person with high character exhibits what? integrity, maturity, and an abundant mentality. See, it affects all of that. Mm. And so, so if it says that we, we will, um, uh, being a person of, of high, of high character, we'll exhibit, we'll exhibit uh, integrity. We'll exhibit maturity. Now, what does maturity look like in that? See, it takes a mature person to forgive people and apologize. And apologize. <laughs> Thank you. It, that, that, that really does take, I'm telling you, that takes maturity. It really takes maturity. I, and I'm telling you that God had to grow me up. Now, I'm going to talk about me. I ain't going to talk about you. God had to grow me up. Why? Because I had a hard time forgiving people. I asked God to give me a revelation of his love. That's how I got there. I asked God to give me a revelation of his love. And God, he gave me a revelation of his love. And it was at that particular point, it became really easy. Er, <laughs> I put it that way. <laughs> Easier to, uh, to really just forgive people. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to pass that off like it's easy to do, uh, it, but it was. It was. It became a lot easier. It becomes easier as you practice it. Right. If you don't practice it on a regular basis. It, it's hard, and you have to do it. And then you, you forgive someone. You move on. Someone offends you, and then you're not practicing. It's just like exercise. Mm -hmm. You're doing it on a daily basis. Um, it doesn't hurt as much. But when mm -hmm. you first start out, you sore. It hurt. You feel it. Mm -hmm. So indication, when it's difficult to forgive people, it is because you are struggling in your maturity mm -hmm. in Christ. Not quite mature yet. Not quite exhibiting the maturity. Pastor Betty, would you say that when a person forgives a person and pray for them over a period of time, that the pain that they cause will also leave I don't, I don't know. When did I say that? I'm, I'm asking you. I said, would you say that that's a true statement or not? Okay, I'm sorry. Repeat yourself. I said, when you forgive a person and you pray for them, like Bishop was saying, it's a process. You may have to do it 
many times before you are able to uh, not it not bother you anymore. I said at the end of that time, does that mean that that pain that they cause will also be gone? No, at the pain goes away over time. In my experience, for me, the pain goes away over time, but I have to on purpose practice those things that Bishop were, were doing. But if you know you do it that one time, that pain is still gonna be there because it's fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we don't ever want people to think just because you did it that one time that you're still, our feelings are real, mm -hmm. you know? So we can't, we can't just discard our feelings like we don't feel, but by faith, you know, I believe that I have this. So I'm going to walk this out until this feeling goes away because it will go away. Mm -hmm. But you have to do those things that Bishop said on a regular basis until the feeling is gone. And, and see, here's, here's another thing that we probably have to, I mean, just really think about this. I don't know how many of you ever done this. I know I've done it enough times. You know, I'm sitting, I'm sitting under a table or I'm coming to the table and I bump my knee. <laughs> you, don't just, you don't just go ahead and sit down. What you do? You walk that thing out. Yeah, man. walk out. <laughs> you walk that thing out. You walk that thing out, and, and and it's not long after walking it out that the pain leaves, doesn't it? Anybody ever done that? Okay, did you walk it out? <laughs> Come on, let me know. Did you guys walk it out? I, I sit down and hold it. I hold on to the pain until you said I hold it. I sit down. Oh, Jesus. Don't sit down and hold it. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Yeah. Bishop, one, one question before we go. I, I really honestly, and this is a burning question um, on relationships. Next, another session, can we talk, which I thought we were going to talk about, um, why, what I've seen all my life, and I'm still confused about, why Christian married couples get divorced? And I'm looking towards a marriage. I've never been married, but, you know, just things, questions I have, but why specifically Christian couples get divorced. So maybe in another session or another relationship um, talk, we can go over that. Well, well I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, and, and yeah, we, we would have to do that in another session and we plan to do that. But then here's one of the things that I will say in short. In short, um, if people put into practice these five principles, yep. these five principles that I'm gonna give you, integrity is, is one. Um, if, if, people, if people really put these things into practice, there will be a lot fewer divorces. And the reason that they're, and they're you know, whether, um, whether, in the, uh, whether unsaved or saved, there'll be a lot fewer divorces if they put these practices in these principles in, in place um because these principles come with things yeah. that develops you from the inside while you're single yeah <laughs> and so when you, you you do these things while you're single you're not doing these things on the other side of marriage you're working on yourself. You're getting yourself any relationship. You're getting yourself relationship ready. These keys, like Bishop said, will help anybody, but they don't, they're not relationship ready. They don't think about it. They think I can just get married. I don't have to do anything. I can show up beautiful or handsome. I got a job. I got a car. That's all I need. And, and, and the reality is, is that, you know, and the reality is, is that, you know, you, you may have all of that, you may have all of that working for you, not these principles, but you may have all of the <laughs> right. things that everybody just said that's working for you. But then these things are the things that goes into motion when that person does something wrong. Right. When, you know, th they don't treat you exactly uh, the way they used to treat you when they make a mistake. And how many of you understand that? See, that's when these principles, they go in the, they go in the motion and, um, and you know, and you just absolutely, you just absolutely know how to forgive, uh, forgive them. Yeah, and, and how to respond to those things. 
you know, you don't do a tit for tat. You know, and so when, when, you, when you don't do that, because then remember, everything is cause and effect. How, how many of you are understanding that? Everything is cause and effect. So, you know, in a marriage, sometimes you have so much stuff, you got so much stuff going on, you don't even know what you don't even know what a cause is anymore. You know, because it was never it was never really dealt with. And so now you don't even know where the cause is in order to stop the effect. So so everything is cause and effect. So this this happened because of that. And so because this is going on right now because of that, now you don't know, you got to go back to the cause. What what caused this thing? And so now watch this now. And so a, a lot of times in a marriage, what actually happens, they keep going on with the cause. And the, and, and the effect, and, and you know, you holding on with everything that you got, but you know, but the cause, it keeps happening or not happening. And then, um, you know, hmm, something break loose. And, and, you know, and you have to really look at that and say, well, what was the cause? I dare you, to, I dare you to try, I dare you to practice that in whatever, whatever the situation, whatever the situation, whatever the kind of relationship, whatever, you know, just, uh, I dare you, I dare you practice that. Even if it's in relationship to, even if it's in relationship to your money. Uh, Elder Carla did an awesome job with, uh, yes. Uh, doing uh, last week, doing uh, and the week before, uh, talking about talking about money. Now she didn't. I don't think she actually mentioned this term, but it but it's the same thing that she said. You know, uh, the fact that you don't the fact that you don't have money is a it, there's a cause somewhere. There's a cause somewhere, and so and so people keep in that cause. And they're trying to figure out why does this money don't ever come together? It's because you 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 mess you you're messing up in the cause. You got to fix the cause, and the, everything else that goes back down through there. The effects will change once you fix the cause. So a lot of people are trying to smack the smack the effects out the way, and leave the cause intact. And it's not it's just simply not going to work. Same thing in relationships. I hope that makes sense to you. It's the same thing in relationship. You have, you have to address the cause. What is the cause? And so if you're having challenges in your relationship, go back to the cause. What is the cause of this now? What is the cause? Address the cause, fix the effects. So make sure you're here on Sunday and Wednesdays for the rest of this <laughs> month so you can get the rest. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Bishop, you have a comment in the um, chat that says, Bishop, it's from Pastor Kelly. You did a teaching some time ago about removing the pen from the past, getting free from past hurts, where we stop living out a pen at the point of hurt. Ooh, that was a long time ago. But you know what, Kelly? I think I, if I can, I was, I was talking to Wim about that. If I could find that case, if I could find that case, it's in a small case about that big. And I had some, I had some CDs in there. If I could find that, I will absolutely find that uh, because it's in there. It's in there. Yep. It, uh, yep. It's in there. I'm, I'm, I think I may have brought it here. I'm not sure. So I'll check my library downstairs. Uh, I think it may be here, but yeah, uh, absolutely. Because we have things that we have things that we stuck on the wall that we stuck on the wall with the pen of the past and we never addressed it we're just gone on we're just gone on with life but that thing is still up on the wall the pen of the past so you got to deal with that i transcribed that for you bishop years ago you may still have it somewhere and it's in my computer there I'm gonna I'm a look for it. I'm gonna look for it, but it's still in there. That that is very appropriate for what we're talking about this month. Very appropriate. I hope this. I hope this really. I hope you guys really got something from this. Thank you for that, Carla, because I'm 
I, I can't, I really can't see the, um, if I take my glasses off, I can see that, but you know, my glasses on, I can't even see that. <laughs> um, man, I hope you guys, I hope you guys uh, got something from this on tonight. Uh, like Pastor Buddy said, you know, hang out with us on Sunday and Wednesday. We're gonna be, we're gonna talk about some good stuff this month. I'm telling you, there's gonna be some deliverance in the house. Glory to God. And then, Amen. That, that may be literally deliverance. Amen. Amen. But understand this: this is what we this is what we need, folks. Valentine's Day is this month. You know, we gonna we gonna. Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> hallelujah! Uh, Brother Rich, I think I think when we were in the building. Did we hand out flowers uh, this month? That's what we used to do when we were in the building. Anybody remember that? Was was that Valentine's Day? Yes. Oh, Valentine. No, that was Mother's Day. Was that Mother's Day? Yeah, Mother's oh, Day. Okay. okay. We, we, we never met on Valentine's Day. Oh yeah, it's true. On a Sunday this year, this month. Is it on a Sunday? Okay, we're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to think about something uh, special that we can do. Uh, Alicia, our fun person. Uh, we're gonna have to think about something that we can do to uh, to make it make it glorious. Hmm. And I think we we are now it we're um, eleven days away, so um, maybe we can do something that would be uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, whether you're single, married, whatever your whatever your uh, situation is. We could probably do something wonderful and virtually wonderful. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll talk to Alicia or some of our other fun people and as they get together and show us how to have fun again. <laughs> amen. I brought my own amen with, for that one. <laughs> I sent you an email, Bishop. One came back. Just wanted to let you know that. Okay. So you can go look at it uh, earlier. I will do that. I will do that. Okay. Absolutely. Please do. Right. I just felt led to pray um, for us on tonight. So I just want to just pray. Father God, and Lord God, we just thank you for this time, this time yes, of fellowship, Father. Lord God. We thank you for your word, Lord God. Thank Father, you. Father, I pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice yes, when they're Father. listening to a replay, Lord God. In the name Father, of Father, help us to do inventory of ourselves, yes, of our Father. hearts, Lord God. Anyone, Father, that we are holding in unforgiveness, yes. Lord God, I pray that you will bring it to the surface, Lord yes, God, Father. so that we can deal with it. Lord God, I know yes, it's your Father. desire, Father, for us to be free, for you to bless us abundantly, Lord yes, God. Father. So, Father, we want to get this year strong kicked off strong so we yes, just thank you right yes, now yes. lord god that we will not only be hearers but doers of your word yes, lord father. father god we will be people of integrity lord god that they yes, can father. see that the lord is with us yes so we thank you we give you glory we thank you for everyone having peaceful sleep right now in the name of jesus we thank you for peace that surpasses all understanding thank no you, weapon father. formed against us shall prosper thank we you, thank jesus. you god that your favor surrounds us like a yes, shield father. in jesus name we pray amen amen Amen. Amen. Awesome, Amen. awesome. Amen. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you. Let's uh let's give to the Lord. Praise God. The information is there. Or you can um you can use the Cash App or you can use the um uh Heritage CI uh Heritage CI dot <laughs> <laughs> org forward slash live. No, yeah. forward slash give. Amen. It's in the, it's in the chat. <laughs> awesome, awesome. It's in the chat. It's in the chat. So all you have to do is just copy that and uh, yeah, you copy that and put that in your browser. You should be good. Awesome. Appreciate you guys so much. If you guys have any questions at all, if you have any questions at all, uh, that you would like to see us address this month, yeah. you can um, you can send it to bishop at heritageci.org. That's bishop at heritage, 
ci.org. Thank you guys. Love you guys. The light. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Right, Good night. God bless you. Bless you guys. Thank you. That was Bishop. That Good night. Bishop. Bishop. That. Uh, Bishop at. That's Bishop at Heritage C I C is in Charlie Eisen International. Dot O R G. It's in the chat too, Eva, if you see it, if you can see it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, no, Bishop, please don't forget to look at my email. I want to get your thoughts. Okay, okay. I will. All right. All right, then. You now. Bye. Bye bye. bye. We at Heritage Church International would like to personally thank you for your support of this dynamic, prophetic, and teaching ministry. Visit us online at theprofitcenter.com for ministry resources, live streaming, and additional information about this powerful ministry. Now prepare yourself to receive a dynamic word by Bishop R. S. Walker. Thank you.